White House apparently stonewalling the Committee on Oversight and Government Reform on its request for some of the documents that should be in the White House's possession on Mr. Floyd. Uh, I will correct you on that. Um, the committee sent a form letter to several agencies, including the White House, asking to find those documents. The documents in question, uh, the Department of Defense possessed and sent over to him. Uh, the documents that occurred before he worked here would be up to him to turn over. So my understanding is the committee has the documents that they and were looking the, for. In the letter that Mark Short, and I know that SF-86 was referred to the DIA. And it wasn't just referred to him. That's where it's well, well, I know, but they were referred to the DIA for the SF-86, and apparently they have, they have gained access to that document. But there are other documents that should be in the White House's possession that Mark Short, in a letter to the committee, said the White House can't provide because of sensitive nature. Also well, said that there were no documents that were available prior to the 20th. Right. Uh, but I also asked the question: Does the White House believe that uh, Lieutenant General Flynn might have broken the law when he filled out SF-86? I, I don't. That that would be a question for him and, and and a law enforcement agency whether or not he filled. I don't know what he filled out and what he did or did not do. That all happened. Uh, he filled that form out prior to coming here, and so it would be up to the committee and other authorities to look at that. I don't know. But with respect to the letter, they asked for three things. The SF-86, which you properly point out was in the possession of uh, the DIA. They, my understanding through reports is that they have obtained that. Um, then they asked for documents prior to January 20th. As you know through the Constitution, uh, we didn't assume uh, the White House until January 20th at noon, so we don't have the documents prior to assuming the White House. Uh, and then the third would be uh, they listed for every call and contact that he made, which is an extraordinary uh, number. That that that's that's a very un, un, um, that's a very unwieldy request. So was it the sheer volume of it, or was well, I mean, it's it's to say we want the National Security Advisor, whose job it is to talk with foreign counterparts on a daily basis, to document every call that he may or may not have made, uh, is not exactly a request that's able to be filled. But every document that they asked for, my understanding is that they've gotten. Is it your position that during the transition, the Trump transition has no custodial possession of any of these documents? Well, I would, again, that, but that's... That, that Lieutenant, I mean, that, that Flynn filled out as part of the process to become the President's National Security Advisor. I mean, what you no, seem no, to be suggesting the, the, there's an arm's length relationship. No, no, it's because there's... Transition. Right, thanks. There's two, there's two issues. He had an SF-86, which is a security clearance form, that was filled out during the Obama administration. He had a re-investigation uh, in 2016. That was done under the last administration. And again, those are, those are not um, documents that the White House would ever possess on any employee. They would come from the requesting authority. So, and, and so in that case, again, remember they sent out a form letter to I think five or six agencies requesting the same documents. The place where the documents that they had questioned did did fulfill that request. Right. And I'm just trying to find out from your perspective: is there no obligation either the transition or the White House to do anything more than you have done or has been done in this matter? Everything that the White House has been asked to do, we have made uh, that that. The only documents that were made available to that were made available to them that they asked for were the ones that the Department of Defense had. And how about these calls made when he was working during the transition on behalf of a future President Trump? Aren't those things that you should have some either responsibility or obligation to provide if you can? Well, I think again, it's a question is if you can. When you ask for every that call, no, but I, I think that's a, that's a pretty. Um, th th there is, I mean, that to ask for every call or contact. That a national security advisor made is a is pretty uh, outlandish, if you will, to say that we want to have a list of everything. That that you know, oh, there but is no. But but theoretically, but again, the, those the calls were made on behalf of the Trump transition, were they not? When when, when he was in the, I mean, this look, this Major, time, he he did not. The, we started this administration on January twentieth. All the information that they're talking about occurred prior to him being at the White House. Right, but it was so working for the transition. And okay, I'm just then, saying, is there then, any then obligation you have? Not, to, not the White House. Everything that is, is being questioned occurred prior to January 20th. But you actually were the delivery of those documents. But you're acting as if you had no custodial or, or right, ethical responsibility of your own transition. That's all I'm trying no, to. No, no, and, and I guess the question is, is that what? He was the, not the, making the, calls I, as a I, private citizen. He was. I, I, as a future national security advisor. I understand that. And and right now to ask the White House to produce documents that were not in the possession of the White House is is un, is ridiculous. So I, I got John. Thanks a lot, John. A few weeks ago when General Flynn's attorney wrote to the Senate Intelligence Committee suggesting some sort of immunity deal for 
uh, General Flynn. I asked you a question about whether the White House would be invoking the executive privilege. And your response at that time was, no, we have no problem with General Flynn testifying. He's free to do so. Uh, we won't be invoking any type of privilege. Does that also apply to any documents that the White House may have relating to General Flynn, his service, his short service as the national security advisor to the president, and the time in which he served uh, in the transition period as an advisor to the president-elect? Um, I, I think, look, when you ask, I know that when, when Chaffetz was asked um, that whether or not the pretend, what he is looking into had anything with the White House, my understanding is he was very clear that that had to do with his time prior to that. So talking about what his role is at the White House seems not germane to any of the questions that are being asked. Uh, prior to his service at the White House? Well, that, again, would have to go to General Flynn. There's nothing that is being asked for with respect to his service here at the White House. The documents that Major was referring to rest within the Department of Defense. My understanding is uh, that they were provided. And the overall issue of privilege, uh, would you be I, I, we're not. That, I, that, I'm not at this time it's, to answer that question. I don't know the answer. There's nothing that, that would uh, that I'm responding to on that particular matter. Sean, Trey. Sean, Sean, generally speaking, within the Trump administration, how important is it to the president that everyone working for this administration is honest on their security clearance forms? Very. And so, and if they don't, then they're going to be, you know, investigated. I mean, but you assume, I mean, look, everybody fills out forms all the time, all of us. At some point, we sign our name and swear under oath that we, everything that's done there. So I think each and every one of us, um, in different ways, signs our names and, and agrees to abide by the information that we provide. Just following up, uh, do you know if the president is aware of the comments that were made by the House Oversight Chairman today? And does he agree at all uh, with the assertion that uh, it seems as though General Flynn was not in compliance with the law? I'm not. And again, that's not, that would be a matter for them to look into, not for us. Caitlin. Does the White House consider Mike Flynn's payment from Russia today to be a payment from a foreign government? I don't know. That was, again, all the, all of that occurred prior to his service. Uh, White House. Does this White House consider a payment from Russia today to be a payment from a foreign government? I understand. What I'm saying is everything that he did was prior to coming to this White House. So right. for us to determine someone else's thing right. as a so consultant. Today, do you consider, consider that to be a payment from a foreign government? I'm sorry, if what? If, if someone took money from Russia today, today. If they were an employee of the of the White House, absolutely. But I mean, again, I don't know the exact circumstances. Everything that is being discussed occurred prior to uh, to his employment at the White House, occurred as a consultant. Um, and so whatever he did, as long as he did it in compliance with the law, as every one of us as a citizen has the right to do, that that's up to, to an individual to do and then comply with the law. To follow up on that, why, didn't he, why wasn't he more closely vetted during the transition period? Well, again, you fill out forms, and I, I, I feel like the White House and the Trump transition team should have known about this before they were having him come to the White House. Well, again, you, you fill out the forms, you do an investigation, you do a background check. Every employee gets that background check done, and they have a security clearance, and they fill it out, and that's how everyone operates under the same guise. Um, I have two questions, but I want to follow up on that. So you're saying that it's a problem with the process of vetting, the vetting process, and not no, that I'm just saying that. I'm not saying it's a process with the vetting. I'm saying that every single person who comes to work in here at a certain level is required to fill out the same form, an SF-86, and they, that background check is adjudicated. Um, you rely on that person when they sign their name and then investigators to pick it up. But there's always going to be a, you know, in the case of uh, people who had a prior